Music and Booze with Mo is produced and distributed by Eats Drinks TV, a service of the Center for Culinary Culture, home of the Cocktail Collection and First Reel Entertainment, and is available wherever fine podcasts can be heard. The Center for Culinary Culture, telling the story of food and drink, one taste at a time. Welcome to Music and Booze with Mo. I'm Mo Herms, and I've worked in the music industry most of my life, so have met some pretty amazing musicians over the years. I also love a good cocktail, and I've encountered some really interesting bartenders as well. It seems that there is a lot of crossover, so when I can, I like to talk to musicians and bartenders about music and booze. Join us at the bar, won't you? Music and Booze with Mo is brought to you by The Mermaid, a cozy neighborhood bar with an aquatic flair in the little Tokyo area of downtown LA. Open seven days a week, featuring tropical cocktails and snacks, The Mermaid also has a daily happy hour from 5 to 8 p.m. Follow The Mermaid on Instagram at The Mermaid LA to hear about upcoming events and check them out at TheMermaidLA.com. Head to 428 East 2nd Street, Los Angeles, for a drink. Welcome to the 100th episode of this silly little podcast, Music and Booze with Mo. Thank you for being here and listening. And I have to say that when I was thinking about doing this podcast, I was talking with a girlfriend who works in the music industry, and we both were saying, if I do this podcast, you have to have this particular guest, and that particular guest was Greg Dooley, because she works with Greg. Greg has been a friend of mine for a long time, and he happens to be a partner in several bars. Greg Dooley is otherwise known as the frontman of the band The Afghan Wigs, also The Twilight Singers, very much a well-established musician out there in the world, and, like I said, he owns a whole bunch of bars. So he's pretty much the epitome of what this podcast is all about, and one of the first people I ever, ever considered, if not the first person I ever considered to be a guest on this show. Of course, it took four years and a pandemic and stuff, but we finally got around to doing it. So here is me and Greg sitting around, shooting the shit, mostly about bars and sometimes about music as well. When I was talking to Rinda about this, you were one of the, she's like, and you have to interview Greg. And I'm like, well, yeah, he's one of the people I know who is a music person and is also a bar person, you know? You're, you were one of the first people I know who went into that world and everything. So, introduce yourself. Well, I think we all went into that world. <laughs> well before we became yeah. proprietors. <laughs> I'm Greg Dooley. Hi, Greg. <laughs> You're listening to no. Mo's podcast. <laughs> You don't have to do that. I fucking got to do whatever I want. You can do whatever you it's want. Ca- it's, but I want you to tell everybody. It's casual Sunday. What are all the bars that you are a part of at this time? Uh, in order, the bars that I own shares in are the shortstop in Echo Park, Footsie's in Cypress Park, the R-Bar 
and the Royal Street Inn in New Orleans, Bud Rips in the Bywater of New Orleans, and Club TG in Atwater Village, Los Angeles, California. And these are all wonderful neighborhood bars, all of them. They have such amazing identities, I think. They're all neighborhood bars. They're all like we, they all have the same name that they did before we bought it. You know, like it's, uh, they were all bars that I went to before I, before I, uh, before I had a, an ownership in them. And, uh, but like we were talking about earlier, like when you have, you have like an owner, when, when you have a relationship with a bar that you like, for instance, like, uh, uh, we were talking about the R bar, mm-hmm. it being the bar that I knew the best of all of the bars that I would eventually uh, um, co-own. But that was my hang when I was making the first Twilight Singers record and what was at that time the final Afghan Wigs record. Um, so I was down there for two years and that we, me and Steve Myers went there like at least five nights a week. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we'd shoot pool and we'd listen to music and you just, you know, hang out and have a good time. It was just a, a, a great meeting place, uh, a great vibe in there. And uh, and that's really, that's that's how you make a successful bar. You make, you make a place where, you know, people feel comfortable drinking. You give them nice options to drink. You give them good music to listen to. And, uh, um, you know, and then you get out of the way. <laughs> well, how did you get into having a bar in the first place? I know we've talked about the early days <clears throat> of the shorty, but I don't know how it came to be in Charles your Charles Gagnier, my uh, uh, friend of over 30 years, he knew these guys that were going to try to buy the shortstop and was I interested? And I went to this meeting and there were like 10 dudes and I was like, oh. <laughs> and I, and I, and, and there, I mean, uh, and nice guys too. Yeah. So it wasn't like, you know, but there's just like way too many people and I'm like, and I don't know any of these people and mm-hmm. you know, I know Charles, that's it. Mm-hmm. And so I, I said, I backed off. And then he called back and he said, if you went in, you would be one of six, and I was like, "That's that's a little more that's a little more doable." So, and you know, I think we all put in I don't know fifteen grand, twenty grand, something like that. And, How did uh, you get the shortstop so cheap? I mean, I mean it's, we, because we got it twenty odd years ago. Yeah, you know? I guess like, that's true. Because I mean, it's in Echo Park, which is super hip now. But yeah, it was there was Echo Park was. A little grittier. It was. It was. <laughs> Wasn't that bar though? Like, was it a cop bar? It was a bar? cop bar. It was, yeah. a, it was a cop bar, but mm-hmm. in the middle of, of like of like you know, like gang culture, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, um, and that you know those are two things that you know a lot of people don't want to get mixed up in. You know, what I mean? <laughs> and you guys are like, let us in crossfire. <laughs> but uh, um, no, but Charles and I would go there and shoot pool before we owned it because we lived in Echo Park. And, uh, um, you know, and a lot of times you'd go there and it wasn't very crowded, you know, and, and if it was like filled with, with cops and it was, you know, like a lot of bad music going on in the jukebox <laughs> there, you just split yeah. like, like any place in the mm-hmm. world, you know? So, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, uh, when, when we took over the shortstop and then, you know, they had this room, a uh, big room off to the side that the, the cops were using to like play, you know, uh, what's foosball Mm -hmm. (laughs) and electric darts and, you know, just stuff that we weren't going to continue. Um, uh, and we were like, oh, well, we could just, there's a drop ceiling in there. We blew out the drop ceiling and all of a sudden it became kind of like, like, man, this would be a great like dance room, you know? And to have a dance room in, in just a neighborhood bar, but like literally like have like, you know, essentially a neighborhood disco. Mm-hmm. And we and we didn't charge to get in. Not at first, you know. Uh, um, it became 
Cool, because Charles and I DJed. We DJed all the time. You DJed. I DJed. I still you say know, one my, of my favorite DJ gigs I ever did yeah, was at my, the short Yeah, I mean, like we've had so many just badasses come through and <laughs> and DJ there. I mean, I was like hanging with Mugs back in the early two thousand. Mugs used to come DJ. <laughs> Uh, uh, Lance Rock, of course, mm-hmm. who was like, you know, he was oh, uh, best DJ, uh, one of the best so DJs. phenomenal, you know, like uh, uh, Howie Pyro DJ there, you know, uh, <laughs> um, Mike B, um, Jason Mason mm-hmm. and uh, Ed Ruscha, who were. Phenomenal as well. And when you guys first took it over, didn't you get behind the bar too? I bartended. I yeah. bartended. I co-managed. Yeah. So you know, see, I never got to pop in there when you were bartending. I think I've moved to LA after you had stopped doing that. Well, here's here's my like. I'll tell you. Um, here was my bartending. <laughs> here's if if I was bartending you, this is how it went. That you we didn't we don't do stupid drinks. <laughs> Which means? Which means, here's what, you either want a beer or you tell me within two ingredients what you want in your drink. <laughs> blank and blank. We'll do that all day long. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you're telling me, you're essentially telling me how to make it. And that now I know, you know. So the blank and blank was my specialty. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and I, and I could, I could, I could pour a beer and, uh, you know, knew how to angle that and stuff. But, uh, I did, you know, I did all right. I, I, I got some good tips. What got you behind the bar in the first place? Well, we were just trying to, I wanted to get to know the business I was in. And I, yeah. I had at that point, like I was like, Super smart. I, was, I was not, not really, uh, I had no plans to like tour or, or make another album in any kind of like. I wasn't in a hurry to do mm-hmm. music, and I was looking for just to like calm down for a while. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to know how the bar worked. Yeah. And that and working there was going to help me do that, and it did help me do that, and it gave me a good understanding and a foundation on how to, you know, continue on and keep doing it. And you know, I mean, all you know, thankfully, all of the bars that I. That you know that we that we do they've they've been they've been successful. And also probably didn't hurt as Echo Park was this you know up and coming hipster area to have Greg Dooley behind the bar. I mean, I'm I, sure I there mean, were some I, people I, that came I, for that I, too. I, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe back then. But uh, uh, there's you know there's there's you know there's plenty of, uh, of, of, of new people there. A lot, I mean, man, a lot of people came through the shortstop, like a mm-hmm. lot of famous people. Like it was, it was like itville for a couple of years, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but like anything like that, it's, it's, it's yeah. not sustainable and yeah. you don't want it to be because, you know, I mean, uh, like, and like anybody who's been in any kind of public venture, like, you know, the public is fickle. <laughs> Was there, am I remembering correctly, but did you, did a member of your family own a bar? Like, did your uncle have a yes, bar or something like that? Yes, I felt like uh, there was a bar, that, there's a bar history yeah. with you guys. My, uh, I, my, I had two different uncles who uh, uh, owned bars. My Uncle Bob owned a bar. My Uncle Bud owned a bar. And uh, um, that was back in Ohio? Back in Ohio. And those were bars, from, they were... 60s and 70s, early yeah. 70s. Um, Did you ever get to go into them? Oh, of course. I, I was going to say, yeah. when you were a kid, just sitting yeah, on mom's yeah. knee, right? <laughs> yeah. Or I'd go with my dad, mm-hmm. or I would go like with, you know, one of my cousins. But there was, uh, one was called Dooley's Tap Room, and that was on High Street. And, uh, um, and then there was Sportsman's Tavern, which was on Dixie Highway or uh, Route 4. <laughs> as, they, as they say and uh uh but like you know cool like you know pool table bars mm-hmm. had some bar food mm-hmm. always had sports on the tv and <laughs> and you know uh they were cool and i you know i mean i i became you know very aware of of, of like the 
you know, the community aspect of it, you know, like people, neighborhood bars, you know, I mean, you know, in a, in a, in a town like L.A., you're going to need them to become slightly destination-ish because mm -hmm. we're all so spread out. Mm -hmm. But, uh, um, you know, when people in a neighborhood, like, that's their bar, they go there because they can walk there and they can walk home, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or, uh, or it's, a short, it's a short trip, so... You know these these kind of families build up inside the bars, and the, in in you know, you you get to uh, you get to experience that along along with it. And then you know, honestly, like sometimes you know, I'll be like gone from someplace so long. I just went back to New Orleans, and uh, um, you know, there were a, a, a bunch of people you know working like at Bud Rips who. Really nice people, but I'd never met them before. Yeah. But you watching their interactions with the clientele, like clearly, they had a thing going, and that's that's the perpetual wheel of of any kind of like you know neighborhood establishment. Yeah. You know? Well, I think I see one of the kind of the links I see in that bar community and music is you know the. There's a band, there's a fan community, there's all this stuff. It's, it's about creating these communities. Sure. And that's kind of the love that I have for both of them is fandom, when it's not kooky and weird, you know? Right. <laughs> just that fandom or even just musicianship or, and the support that can come within that and how you find these similar sorts of things in the bar world, like in neighborhood bars. I just, I love Well, that you feeling. also find them in, like, venues. Yeah. When, when you're, you know, when we first started, the, you know, touring... America, for instance, we were playing this in bars. Early Afghan Whigs days. Early yeah. Afghan, or mm -hmm. Black Republicans even, like the band before that. Mm -hmm. Like we, we were playing, uh, we're playing neighborhood bars, like not even like concert venues, but just like, you know, a bar where you like set up on the floor and, <laughs> you know, fucking let it rip. <laughs> and, uh, but those, you know, I mean, I could name you a bunch of neighborhood bars that we played at, like coming up and that's, you know. You, you know, you you get your chops, you pay your dues, yeah. and you have a lot of fun, and you meet cool people, and like you know, I'm I'm friends with people that I met from back then. You know, like uh, um, like in, in particular, let's say like Joe Shanahan in Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, where we used to go up and play uh, 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 Thursday nights. They had this thing called Rock Against Depression, and there was like four or five bands every Thursday night, and we. We got invited to go up there and like, you know, I mean, it it was, you know, sometimes it was good, sometimes, but like as, as it started, I remembered like the gang who worked there, the gang mm -hmm. who enjoyed it and, yeah. and, and all that. And, and uh, there was the Uptown in uh, in Minneapolis that was, uh, uh, again, you know, served food and you then you'd play after dinner, basically, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and 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 it was wild. I know? remember I used to go see bands play when I lived in the Bay Area. Still, Be, th those kinds of places, Be some yeah. bar, yeah, and well, covered, afterwards covered you, wagon, totally, I beam, um, kilowatt. Yeah. I don't remember that one. Kilowatt was uh, that was later nineties. I remember seeing I think I saw you guys at the I beam. Yeah. But those are places where afterwards you're just loading up and everybody's kind of around and you're talking to the people who came to see you. And I had a roommate, and she and I had, if we, we'd talk to bands sometimes, and if they if they were staying near us, we're like, come over, we'll make you breakfast. <laughs> right, sure. Because that was the kind of thing, you know, in, in some worlds, they're like, oh, groupies. We're like, no, we just know that these guys could be guys and gals. Haven't had a real meal. Yeah. Probably in like, a couple weeks they've been eating like gas station food well you know? <laughs> I, I, i'll tell you like when i was when when we were touring early on like i would at some point from the stage i'd be like hey we don't have a place to sleep tonight. <laughs> can we sleep? Can we, if we can sleep on your floor if we can sleep at your house could you come yeah. let us know and every fucking time someone would let us stay at their house mm -hmm. That's community, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that's like, you know, meet, meeting, meeting people from, you're not from this town. They're going to like, and man, like you, I have lifelong friendships from stuff like that mm -hmm. too. If somebody mm -hmm. let me stay at their house, mm -hmm. I still know these people, Yeah, you know, and you remember like you're, we're playing in a bar. So <laughs> it, it's, it's, you know, like when the opportunity came for me to like express myself in that way, like, you know. I had a fucking pedigree at that point.
is the shortstop. Because I remember when you guys got footsies, there was that, isn't there like that trap door? We found that whole secret downstairs oh, yeah. area that had all that. Store, there was a storeroom down yeah, there. Yeah, storeroom, but nobody yeah. had been in there for a while, right? And um, I just remember like, I just, just kind of the, the growing up sort of as a bar owner for you. Like, you know, the shortstop was, that was a party scene. I remember. Oh, man. We had so much fun. I mean, I had some fun in that bar with you. I know. We had so much fun there. At shortstop? At shortstop. Oh, man. The fucking, uh, it was. Yeah. Fucking legendary. <laughs> like, just, like, like, I mean, just absolutely some of the wildest fucking wildness of all time. And, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I. You kind of have to, you know what I mean? Like good times, but you know now time has gone by. You've got a lot more. I'm sure each each bar, as you've opened a new one with your partners, has a new identity, lessons learned, all of that. So, uh, what what are what what is each bar like now? Well, I mean, they're all different. They're all you know, they're all kind of like I have different groups of partners in all of them. Mm. There's like somebody who's not in not in one but is in the other mm-hmm. or is in four of the others the only dave newpert is the person who i i have all five in common with and he's got 10 yeah i know total. i can't keep track you of know? how many bars so, he has. Uh, um, <laughs> you know he's uh he's he's figured it out <laughs> and is doing quite well for himself um but uh well you already told me which one is your favorite <clears throat> You got um, to pick a kid sometimes. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I was telling you that like someone asked Noop and I at the at the uh, at, at at TG, and we both answered the R bar at the same time. And 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 as I stated earlier, like you know, having had that time where the R bar was my bar, where my hang, my neighborhood bar, mm-hmm. where. You know, again, I'm friends with people from back then, like to this very day. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was actually kicked out of the R bar. <laughs> what did you do? It was something really stupid by <laughs> by like a guy who was like drunk with power, and I uh, I went around him uh, and got not the move. and got and got un. No, I got I got I got you know unbanned. <laughs> And then I'll tell you what, when we, when we signed the lease, I was like, that's right, bitch. Don't <laughs> kick me out of here now. You know what I mean? I, Check I, me out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question for you about the R bar, and it is the barber's chair. Yep. Has that always been there? Yeah. The, right when you walk in the door, there's a barber's chair it, smack yeah, in the middle. It, it was always there, but... If I'm being honest, like, first of all, like, my friend Corey, like, stole it a couple times. <laughs> and, uh, um, so and it then, just went and missing from the bar It got, went missing, but, like, it, it became pretty easy because it, like, has oil in it because it moves, mm-hmm. moving parts. Mm-hmm. And it dumped, like, a can of oil in the back <laughs> of his SUV. And I was like, I'm like... You're like, hmm, I guess it's yeah, like, it's like yeah. blood on the scene or something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what was, why play, did... Play, play stupid games. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they steal it? Just to mess with you? Play stupid games. <laughs> and you and, and 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 for a while, weren't you guys actually giving people haircuts in there? We do still. still? Yeah, but what I'm gonna what I was gonna say is, oh, is it's not the. It is a different chair. Oh really? Yeah, it's a better chair. Is it that I, old chair sucked? I haven't sat in it and, for a little uh, bit. Uh, and we got like fully. Like baller chair in there, yeah. and, but we still cut hair in there. Oh. Beer in a shot. Beer. So cutting a shot. Cutting cut, a shot. Cutting a, right? cutting a beer in a shot. <laughs> I think I don't know who cuts. Who cuts the hair? I forget. There's been a couple different ladies there, but I've had my I've had my hair cut there yeah. by, by at least three different people. <laughs> yeah. And then the other Arbor thing, uh, I don't know if it's still going on. I believe it was like Friday food. There's like a Friday, chef. Friday, uh, Red and Roberto, um, uh, old old friends that met at the R bar. Yeah. Because uh, uh, um, Roberto lives in the quarter, and Red lives in Metairie, which is outside mm-hmm. outside of town. You know where Metairie is. 
over by Mississippi. And uh, um, re- like now we just leave the 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 the, the cooking truck there. Like, it's just permanently parked there. Uh, but Red does shrimp, crawfish. Uh, Roberto does tacos and Mexican food and stuff. And, I swear I had a uh, uh, Red does jambalaya as well. They've, got, they've roasted pigs and yeah. stuff there. I mean, those guys are fucking superstars. And again, it brings out that, like, you know, like, family reunion. Everybody standing out on the street, listening to music. Talking to each other, uh-huh. what have you been doing? I haven't seen you in a while, la 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 la. And just eating good food and it's like it's it's fabulous, man. Like that kind of that kind of like human interaction, it's like it's you, you can't you can't beat it. It's phenomenal and I just love to be around energy like that. Did they just know? start doing that? Did they say, Hey, can we come here on Fridays? And I forget food, who I like it's I, know, so great. I know I know that Bailey had a relationship with Red. Roberto was a regular at the bar. Yeah. And then I, I I forget, like, you know, I mean, again, we're talking like 15 years. So, mm-hmm. like, at a certain point, like, Roberto and Red started, like, just being, like, thick as thieves and, like, super good buddies. And then they started, like, you know, integrating Roberto's, uh, um, his, uh, his Mexican food knowledge. And, yeah. Just making sure it's good. And, uh, yeah, man. So, like... You know, the food aspect there, we've also had, like, other trucks come by. We do trucks, and uh, people set up and do, like, a lot of vegan food down at Bud Rips, and that does really well, too. Like, um, I think the first time that I went to Bud Rips, gosh, was it 2018? When did you guys take over Bud Rips? Bud Rips was 2012. 2012? Yeah. Okay. So, gosh, it must have been sooner than that, then. I remember going there, or, or 2016 11. or something. And Bud Rips had kind of a, a a bit of a CD pass too, didn't it? When you tell me that the old owner was like not the nicest person, <laughs> uh, they, they, I mean they had a reputation uh-huh. of being not like, let's shall we say, inclusive. Yes, <laughs> and uh, um, that you know, I'll put Wait. it to you this way: that when when we uh, when when we bought. When we took the day we took over Bud Rips, we hung a we hung, we hung a large a large photograph of the great Johnny Jenkins in a very prominent spot in the bar to let to let everyone know that uh, uh, everyone was welcome. We 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 welcomed everyone. Mm-hmm. You know. And the first time I went there, I remember that it was in July, so it was a you know a very muggy hot day I remember right. I went there like probably around four in the afternoon or something like that so everyone's just sweating right mm-hmm. and there were people sitting out front on the sidewalks in like the real low kind of lawn chairs right sure yeah just sitting out front like snacking on food with a drink uh-huh. and um and then people inside as well I think there were a lot of people inside but a lot of people sitting outside and I remember I had a, like a lift or something dropping me off and I get out and this woman was like she, she goes out and she's like, you got a real pretty dress on. <laughs> and I was all, thank you. And she goes, that dress is too nice if you're going in there. <laughs> and she was sitting right out front. And I just started laughing and she just started laughing. And then she's like, you have a good time. And oh, I was wow. all, I love you already. Come inside with me. You know, she, but she was just sitting outside drinking her, her beer. Right. You know? And uh, I, I remember thinking, is she the greeter? But I was wearing a nice dress. But um, right. it was just, it, it was, to me, it was just this friendly vibe. It was just people were hanging out, sitting outside. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Well, I mean, it, you know, like, it, the thing about New Orleans is, you know, I mean, a familiar greeting you'll get from them mm-hmm. is welcome home when, yeah. they see, when they see you. You hear welcome home and welcome in. Yeah, welcome I home. I, like, I, once I started getting welcome home... You know, I was like, I knew I was like, it was, that's why the, you know, I have a large, you know, New Orleans family, Mm -hmm. like of, of, of people that I love and and get to, you know, see, I mean, I have, there's a, you know, it's a, an alternate life for me (laughs) down there and and one that I like slip into and, and feel instantly comfortable and. And uh, um, I just love being there, and I love hanging out at both both the bars and 
people that work there and run the bars are all super cool too. It's just, I walk through the alternate life in terms of New Orleans, but that's like... Parallel life parallel is what I should have said. Maybe. Yeah. The, city, the two cities, but then you also have kind of two careers, you know, as a working musician, mm -hmm. and, a, you know, a very successful working musician, and also... I haven't worked as a musician on stage in, like, over a thousand days. <laughs> You're still working, but though. I am, but you I, are creating. But I, but I, I, I am creating. And, uh, maybe I shouldn't be calling it work, then. Uh, no, you can call it. It's, it's, trust me, I, I work very hard on Yeah, and on so, but you have the dual, you're a, you know, a bar owner, because I know that you're involved, even if you're not. I'm a, I'm, I'm a master of duality. <laughs> <laughs> but do you feel like you have kind of two parallel like careers as well because of this mm. or does it just feel like two things that you do that you really enjoy it just feels like two i mean i just feel like i have a really beautiful life that i i, I, that I enjoy interacting with like <laughs> i feel you know um I'm going to say lucky. Uh, fortunate. Fortunate. More than lucky, you know, like, I mean. You've like, worked really hard to yeah, get you, to this place. You know, place. I mean, people, people have luck come at them all the time and don't, in, in, unless you know what to do with the luck, then it's dumb luck. <laughs> you know, and there's nothing wrong with that because I've been the recipient and deliverer of both of them <laughs> and uh, um, uh, but I feel fortunate and I feel uh, uh, grateful mm -hmm. and uh, um, because I love the people that I that I that I own the bars with they're my they're my family and uh, and I love creating new things you know like it's uh, you know, transforming TG was such a, you know, I mean, we went way back to the 40s to like and found pictures and kind of restored. That some bar of the, is so beautiful. What of, you guys did with that bar is so fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I thank you. You know, we did it. We did the patio at TG, and and I mean, that's my favorite. I Let's, haven't been to the patio yet. Oh, we'll go. Yeah. Oh, we're totally going. Yeah, okay. We have to go. Yeah, I love TG, and fun. I wanted yeah. to go for the dance party a couple of weeks ago, but yeah. I'm still not quite comfortable dancing well, in the crowd. Then, I, I, I understand that. But, but <laughs> let's let's go there and and, and sit sit on the patio. I'm like, down. I am totally you know, down. You know, we, um, we we created a it's a vibe. Yeah. So it's, it's a cool vibe out there. I love there. it. I love it. Um. So okay, questions I always ask, and I don't know if you've had the opportunity to do this. Have you ever? created a cocktail that's gone on any of your menus i know you appreciate a fine cocktail but that's we go out and have those you right. know the neighborhood bars are a little different and everything but have you ever you love you know you love the I, stuff. I have you know i i i re honestly like i don't hmm. um you're like me we do that for ourselves at home yeah or for our friends at home yeah <laughs> you know like we have like at like at TG for instance, uh, 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 Nico who runs the the bar for us. I mean, Nico is just such a like, you know, he's a, a an alchemist. He's really into he you know practices them at home and you know like comes by you know if you come by and you're like hey will you try this and mm -hmm. it's it's really cool to like watch somebody who has like, I mean, that dude's got serious game. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's and he's made like some really banging cocktails. Uh, um, Heather at the R bar, like mm. just a, just like you know, just a magician with booze. You know, like she's. We just let her do her thing. Like you know, we mm -hmm. there's Heather doesn't need direction. I, I've thrown ideas. I'm like, hey, I like this stuff. I yeah. like I like <laughs> I like spicy tequila drinks. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> She's like, how about if I throw some basil in there? I'm like, why not? Let's do it. <laughs> I think I had a basil drink. Is there like yeah. a basil, a lemon, something? At the it's like a basil, right jalapeno kind of. Well, you know me. I'm the bad Latina. Fro fro frosty, frosty drink. Yeah, I can't, like... do, I can't do the spicy. But I had something there that had basil in it, I remember, because it was yummy. And it was tequila-based because I, I, like you, like the agaves. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's yummy. You know, when I do these interviews... I, and I, especially when I talk to musicians, I always do the, when did you first pick up your instrument of choice, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like you've answered those questions so many times. Oh, I, what, what, what instrument do you want to... I don't like, know. Well, okay. I feel like we have to do it, just a little bit of it for this. Okay. What was your first instrument? Drums. Was it the drums? Yeah. All these years I've known you and I never knew it was uh, the drums. Yeah. <laughs> Why was it the drums? Uh, because this dude, David Bunn, had a drum set. I never had a drum set, but I would go to David Bunn's house all the time and play drums and I loved it. And did you play drums because he had a drum set or was there like I a drum I love drums. Solo? No, yeah. I love drums. I wasn't really into that. I was, I just, I loved keeping beats and I loved like kind of like, uh, you know, not great. Mm -hmm. It's what, 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 what I, you know, here's what I say about most instruments. I'm like, uh, uh, they're like, you know, somebody will be like, hey, you're a good drummer and I'm like, I'm not a drummer. I play drums. <laughs> but I'm not a drummer. <laughs> You know what I mean? Fucking drummers, like, <laughs> drummers are so badass and can do things that I just can't What's do. What's a drum solo you wish you could play? Uh, I'm not really super into drum solos. Okay. You well, know, if so, you could no. play drums on a song, what song would it be? Do you um, know? Something song. hard. Well, it doesn't have to be hard. Just like, if someone was like, hey, you want to play drums on this track? And you're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> but that, the, the, that, that would suggest the, uh, um, that the song has already been... I'll tell you a song, that, uh, a couple songs that I enjoy playing, where I, I have played on stage. I've played, I've played uh, drums to the Rover oh, by, really? Le by Led Zeppelin, <laughs> and I've played drums uh, uh, to Brain by The Action. The Action, really? Yeah. And I sang and played uh, uh, both songs, so I was singing, I was singing and drumming Shit. at the same time. Hang your brain up in the sky Next instrument was guitar, mm -hmm. and I was 19 when I played guitar. Kind of late, really? a little bit late in the game that is, there. That does seem late in the game. Uh, but you know, because you were, quick, I mean, quick, quick study. Yeah, no shit. You know, um, <laughs> what about piano? When were you? When did you piano, I just I taught myself along the way. I can tell you that I was the first time I'm on record playing piano is like congregation, probably. Mm -hmm. So. That's about five or six years into the band. And uh, and then, like, I realized that I could... I wrote Faded on piano. Mm. I don't play it on the record, but I wrote it on piano. How old were you when you were like, I'm going to do music? That's what, that's what it's going to be. Um, I... Probably, know? yeah, prob probably 19, probably like really? when I started playing guitar, yeah, where I was like kind of, because I, I'll tell you what, I loved the, I, I, loved, I loved the fact that I could be part of a collaborative group, mm -hmm. but I could also create an autonomy in the process, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, where I, 
I could write the movie, I could film the movie, I could play the part in the movie. I w- it was, I could be whatever I wanted to be. Well, I remember in, you uh, telling me that's kind of like really when you got to Twilight Singers phase, that you were like Twilight Singers is me and you know, yeah, who yeah. I surround myself. Yeah, with that was that like project. well, and and that really kind of set me free because like when you're you know, people like when bands stick together, they do. Yeah. And 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 honestly, when I was young, I did too. And when someone that I in a band I loved, I'm like, what's wrong with you people? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you gotta, you know, it's just it's really weird until you're in a band with people that you don't want to be in a band with anymore. You know, like, and that's why things like divorce were invented. You know, yeah. where, you're, where you're like, yeah. hey man, I. Whatever I loved about this, I don't love anymore, and yeah. this person doesn't love it anymore either. Hey, you know, it doesn't have to be ugly or sucky or yeah. terrible or anything. And we've like seen that, that happen in the bar world too. Yeah, you know, it's, exactly. It's, it's partnerships. Sometimes they yeah. dissolve. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're just like, you know, you're just with people mm-hmm. for a period of time, and that's. And what what comes from it comes from. And it. that's that. Yeah. yeah, and it doesn't have to be. I mean, I. I but uh, um, but anyway, um, that uh, um, you know, I just kept on, I just kept playing instruments. You know, I'm like, when no one was around, I'm like, oh, I need to make up a song. You know, it, need, <laughs> it needs a bass. I can play bass. <laughs> you know, am I the greatest bass player? I'm not. But can, <laughs> but can I? Get the point across. Can I trick you into thinking I am? <laughs> Absolutely, especially with Pro Tools. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you guys are working on stuff now, and, yes. and you know, okay, I'm going to say we actually talked about doing this podcast just before the pandemic, and then ran out of time because you were about to hit the road on tour for your first official solo album. Uh-huh. So that's out there in the world. So this is yeah. a reminder to anyone if they haven't heard that there is a Greg Dooley solo album. That was there. such a like it was such <laughs> a like hey uh. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Fuck. And that's the thing too is that it seemed like for decades people were like, "Hey, you ever going to do a solo album? You got a solo album in you?" cuz there was Amber Headlights, but that was kind of more of a cool Pervy's got his. I'm like, is there a bird in your house? (laughs) Is that a cat toy? Yep. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) It's a cat. It's a catnip toy. (laughs) Pervy has made his presence known. Double. Hey, (laughs) Pervis. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Pervy, Pervy, speedballing. Um. Um, But yeah, it was like you know people wanted you to make a solo album for so long, and you kind of gave this like odds and ends collection of under your own name oh right you know when you did amber of, headlights, of amber headlights yeah, yeah stuff that you kind of throw on b-sides yeah. or whatever but you're like okay now that, here's became, a proper... that, be, that became that was that was the big controversy because like how dare you call this year and i'm like well now wait a minute motherfucker let's <laughs> fucking let's back up and look at this for a second you know <laughs> first of all those were a bunch of songs that i already did i didn't set mm-hmm. off to do like this is going to be a Greg Dooley album. It yeah. was not. It was going to be a Twilight Singers record. And then my friend died, and I mm-hmm. ended up doing a different group of songs. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, <clears throat> so Random Desire was, it was uh, um, thought up as, I'm going to make a solo album. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, and this, that's what it's going to be. And that's, that's why it, it, it is purely that. And I love it. And and I'm sorry I didn't get to to, to play it. I, I I did perform it at the uh, at Cold Diggers at the yeah. Uh, um, and actually, I've been meaning to ask you: is are, is that ever going to be made available? For I think people? so. Yeah, yeah. I think there yeah. there was so anyone who doesn't know this summer, you did a performance at Gold Diggers, a bar two, owned two, by did, our friends. Right. I did two. two I did two two shows. Mm-hmm. Two different shows. Which was it was you, one other player, and a bunch of mannequins. Three mannequins okay. <laughs> and me mostly, and yeah. then uh, my doctor uh, oh. played uh, pedal steel yes. and stand-up bass. 
from the other side of the stage, you know, very safely distanced during from, that time. From, from, from behind, yeah. Because that was in the summer of 2020 that you guys did that. That was August of 2020. Yeah. And then about three weeks after I did that performance, I began to work on the new Afghan Wigs record. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. And you almost got to go to Brooklyn to do the Random Desire yeah. show again. And then two more. Once again. <laughs> Delta variant. Delta. One day. One day you'll get to perform that album. Um, I don't think, I probably not. No, no. But I will say that, you know, I mean, I will play a bunch of those songs on stage someday. Yeah. Um, and maybe maybe song. even on the Wigs tour, you know, like there's a couple of songs. Everybody in the band, like, is like, wants to do it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I think there's a couple of songs that would fit right in mm -hmm. with a Wigs show and, you know, probably make it. You know, it makes some people happy. Makes some people happy, I yeah. think so. including <laughs> including me. Yeah. So. Well, that might be a good spot to kind of wrap that up, this up and everything. Okay, so right. I would say, um, if you can suggest a drink and a song or an album, you know, to anybody listening, say, have a sip of this. We're sitting here sipping some delicious tequila right now and listening mm -hmm. to a wonderful French radio station. You know, what would your advice be like? Tonight, you want to calm down, you want to chill out a little bit, drink a little of this, listen to a little of this. Anything come to mind? Um, I, you know what? I'm going to plug. Hold on. <laughs> He's got to pull up the... Oh, is this one of your many beautiful Spotify playlists? Yeah, but I, I'm going to... I'm gonna, I'm not going to give you a playlist to, to play. I'm going to, I'm going to pick something. I like my, my glass clinking. Nice old fashioned clinking of tequila and ice. <laughs> okay. So, um, Dave Newpert, my business partner in all the bars, he turned me on to this wonderful vermouth called vermina vermouth okay and you uh drink it on the rocks uh, i think uh, uh like uh and you know maybe a is it a sweet or, or, or is it a dry rind it's sort of it's not either really it's, huh. it's really unique okay and i would if 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 i were going to do that on on like sort of like toward the the end of fall <laughs> it's a refreshing drink and i would say uh, to listen to the new jose gonzalez album called uh, local valley uh, he's uh you've he's a, always had a soft spot for that voice he's a, he's he's, he's uh, you know a friend of mine mm -hmm. i love his music this record is fantastic and uh that's my suggestion. All right. I'll take it. Thank you very much. Welcome. <laughs> You know, during our music careers, uh, Greg and I, they never crossed paths, but we always had the love of bars. <laughs> and uh, we go back, way back. And so much love, big love to Greg for being my 100th guest on this 100th episode of my little podcast. Thank you so much. I have so much love for that guy. And if you're ever in either New Orleans or Los Angeles, make sure that you check out those bars. Now you can find Greg and his bands on all the social media at Mr. Greg Dooley, at the Afghan Wigs, also the bars at Footsie's, Footsie's Bar. There's also the shortstop, the first one, and Club TG, which I adore. Of course, I have a soft spot for the shortstop since I DJed there in the past. And in New Orleans, you got our bar and Bud Rips and our bar definitely a magical place they both are anyway look all that stuff up visit them 
listen to the music, find Random Desire, Greg's solo album that came out in March of 2020. It is totally worth finding. And there's some beautiful drone footage of New Orleans in the initial lockdown that he's got on YouTube as one of the videos. Gorgeous stuff. Anyway, thank you, Greg. You rule. You rule. Big hugs. And thanks to all of you for listening. Music and Booze with Mo is brought to you by Barkeeper, a head shop for cocktail lovers, located at 614 North Hoover Street in Silver Lake, Los Angeles. Stop by for barware, vintage glassware, a carefully curated collection of spirits, and one of the most impressive selections of bitters anywhere. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook for information regarding spirits tastings. That's barkeepersilverlake.com and also in the Virgil Village neighborhood of Silver Lake, Los Angeles. Thank you for tuning in to our barroom chats on Music and Booze with Mo. For more info about today's guest, or if you want to connect with me, check out my Facebook page, Mo Herms. Please subscribe to the podcast and feel free to tell all your friends about it. While you're there, give the show a rating and a review. It really helps to get the word out. If you want to hear the playlists our guests have curated, search She Be Mo on Spotify, S-H-E-B-M-O. Find pictures of the interviewees and the cool stuff they create on the Music and Booze with Mo Instagram account. Lower your expectations and join us at the bar. Till next time, cheers. Cheers.